Hello and welcome to this uh, video tutorial on the Supply Chain Hub. Um, this is a, a hub that's been developed by the Engenetics team. Uh, it's powered by the Blitz report functionality. Uh, and the idea is that uh, a supply planner, uh, whether you're working from inventory or purchasing, uh, order management, or indeed if you have some of the uh, planning modules such as MRP, uh, this particular hub will uh, help you uh, in a much more organized way. So um, it sits within the manufacturing uh, responsibility. And if we just open it up, I'll show you what, what I mean. Um, first thing you would do is select your organization uh, as the form opens, and then you present it with a very powerful search function. And here we've got the ability to uh, search by item, by partial strings. So for example, if you knew you had an item that started with AS5, you could put that in. Um, you could build up whether it's your planner, uh, you know, put your, your planner code or your buyer code in there. And then you can certainly start searching for different uh, elements of an item to really start to exclude. Uh, you know, you can exclude by item type or status, uh, or indeed you could add a category. So let's, let's go ahead. Um, I put a very basic search in there. Um, you can multi-select values here, so if you wanted to include multiple buyers, you would simply select the buyer from the list, and then you would just add another buyer. So we overcome some of the limited functionality you get from uh, other, other forms within Oracle. I'm just going to remove that because we don't want that. And then search on those items. You see here now we get an exploded bill of materials. Um, that function can be controlled from the front. So, for example, on the, on the front form, if you just wanted to collapse everything and then do your search, it would then reduce everything down to level zero. So you see here that now we can then re-explode if we want to uh, as we step through. So I'll just take it down one more level. At, at this point, we can see um, the, the bill of materials, as I mentioned. If you scroll to the right, you can see further details about the product, uh, for example, uh, if you have your MRP installed, in this particular case, there is a plan. From this point here, it's planning data. The rest of it is, is real time. Um, the on hand is, is real time. The reserved is real time. Uh, and all of the other information, such as the total lead time for the product and the safety stock, are real time. That will be coming from the plan. So if you have an MRP plan, the exceptions will be coming from there. Um, and then over here, you've got, um, you know, whether it's got a routing and then here, how many compression days. This functionality here is coming from the plan um, and um, the rest of it is coming from the standard uh, order management inventory and purchasing tables. Um, from, from here, you've got the ability to multi-select items. So if you wanted to multi-select items, you can report on them. Uh, and here, what would happen is the uh, items will be included in the selection uh, parameters for the for the particular report. These are Blitz reports we've prepared for you. They come with the hub itself, um, so you won't have any problems, uh, you know, running reports and then exporting to Excel. These go through the concurrent manager, uh, so you can also schedule them if you want to do that. Um, the Excel comes in a fully formatted, so it recognizes the data types. So you see here we've got starting from left to right, we've got all the usual information you would find in the material transactions form, um, you know, transaction quantity, primary quantity, and then we can step across to the right, we've got the sub inventory in use, um, and then as far to the right as you would expect, you've got all the different sourcing transaction types that occurred, and the, you know, the sum transaction quantity as well. Um, these are, uh, like I said, the tailorable. Um, so from a user level, you can hide or, or reorder the columns. But from a, a developer level, you would have the ability to change the actual SQL behind these reports. I'll just put that one away for now, and I'll show you some of the other reports. So going back into the hub, um, we can run various reports, for example, uh, the on-hand quantity report for that selection you've got there, or you could select all records on, on the form. Um, so as I'm running that, it's, it's processing through the concurrent manager. As, as I mentioned, there's no XML involved. It's just a straightforward 
EBS to Excel engine, which which makes it the fastest uh, mechanism for getting Excel data um, out of Oracle. You you won't find another tool that's able to do this. So from the left, we've got the organization, um, we've got the sub inventory, and then as we go across, if you're located controlled, then you would have that. Um, the item itself, and then going to the right, we've got the on hand balance, any reservations that taken place. And then as we scroll to the right, we've got the, all the good things we would expect, like uh, whether the item's lock controlled, um, what type of uh, planning organization, etc., what the min max values are, if min max is in use, um, the inventory item ID, and so on. And to the right, if we keep going, you've got the on hand balance over there. So the reports are fully available to, to use. Um, you can use them without the supply chain hub uh, and I'll just show you how to do that. So within the hub itself, you can go to, we've in, incorporated the Blitz report in the actions menu. So you don't need to leave the form uh, and then you can go ahead and run additional reports. So for example, um, if somebody asks you a question around some other aspect, uh, perhaps you're using ACP, um, then you could go ahead and run uh, your ACP reports, so you know ACP exceptions, ACP pegging, um, and we're just going to have a look at those. Um, so here we have an exceptions report. This is based on the ACP plan, um, and you know in this particular case, I've looked for late re replenishment for sales orders. Uh, the planner is John John Smith uh, for the organisation, uh, and I could add, I could build up additional detail here. So let's run that. I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, it, it overcomes those um, queries on exceptions that are relatively slow on the planner workbench. Um, so here we have um, demand quantity, the sales order, uh, order type, uh, who was the who was the planner, uh, what was the, the quantity of the exception, and what's the value, uh, how many days late it is, um, you know, what is the late day arrival count here. Um, etc. to the right. Um, so now go back into the into our hub and we can um, go, go and have a look at some more reports rather back into our workbench and you see um, we have this uh, concept of uh, preceded reports so we can actually if I close this form here I'll just show you what I mean. Um, I was actually, I've, I've actually got two sessions running, which slightly confused me for a moment. Uh, so if you go to the setup, you've got the ability to alter the template. You see here, if we can say, okay, mm, I, I don't really need to see the planner code because that, that's me. Um, I can remove the buyer. I'm not so interested in that. Um, I'd rather see the supply segments a bit higher up. Um, and so this is fully available to the user part uh, of, of the product and then save that. And then you can share that with uh, other users. Close that now. So if we are to, to show you what a developer would have, so the developer would have this button here. Um, so somebody perhaps who's in the IT department and they would make the report. And the report has parameters as you would expect uh, and they're they're easily selectable from either Oracle standard parameters or your own. So very easy to add an additional parameter. For example, if you just wanted to add um, organization uh, code, you could just simply go and add another parameter and then that's done. It doesn't make much sense because we've already got organization up here, but I just uh, to demonstrate um, that's possible as well. Then you have your assignments, so you can assign that responsibility in a, in, in a similar way. You can assign any report in Oracle. You can also give it a user level. Um, so, you know, it's straightforward to add these additional level of, uh, of applications. And then you could categorize it. So these are being categorized um, for DBA. Well, that's actually somebody else has probably added that. We don't need that. The Nginatics is our team. Uh, toolkit, this has gone into toolkit time time critical because it's considered time critical within planning. Um, but you could e equally put it into the operations category here. And then these are, are, are shareable. There's version control tracking. So here we've got the version control tracking um, where people can put comments in as to uh, what state this is. So this is uh, past uh, unit tests. Uh, 
by Glenn. And then as you migrate these reports between environments, um, you're able to, to then simply export it to another environment. You can also import reports. So if you're using BI Publisher and you've got a favorite BI Publisher report, you can bring it into the Blitz report and I'll just show you how to do one. The inventory value report uh, would be a good one. Let's have a look at uh, what that one is. I think it's something like this. Um, so when you bring in that particular report, the report comes in, you convert the report, you've not had to do any development, you have to, don't, haven't had to talk to IT, you've now got uh, an imported business publisher report which you, you can now adapt. It brings in the parameters so you don't have to do any work there. It brings in the assignments, again don't need to do any work there. You may just want to decide how the output looks, so I'll go ahead and run it. Um, this is going to produce um, the all inventory uh, value cost report. It's not using XML. We strip out the XML and we drive it through our own engine. And there it is. We see we see here we don't particularly like that column. It's a repeat of that. So during the translation purpose, you uh, you might help the validation process. You might have to adjust the report slightly. But to all intents and purposes, it, it's uh, more or less out of the box and ready. Um, so I would just go ahead and just slightly alter the layout there. I'd um, create myself a template, get rid of this column, um, and I'd rather move the description up, and then I can close that. So there's your report, your business publisher report. If we ran that now, um, we've got a very fast report available. And again through the concurrent manager, delivering our output. And you see now we've changed the order of the column and we've removed the one we didn't like. Going back into the hub, okay, because we haven't finished there. Um, once we've, we've searched for our items, and I'll just take you back to where we were, slight deviation. Um, you can pick any item you're interested in and then you can analyze the supply and demand. So as an inventory planner, just using inventory, you'd be very interested to find that this is replacing the supply and demand form, but with a whole lot more information available. For example, you've got all of these uh, different um, uh, details going from left to right. We've got the, the supply type here, supply demand, uh, what type of transaction, and then we've got these identifiers. Now you can drill into each of these identifiers. So it will open the form for any of these, the original source form. Here we have move orders uh, for, for this particular record, and then you can drill into those details. If we have a look at another type of record, let's say, for example, we look at um, the uh, unreleased, uh, or sorry, if, if we're gonna have a look at the unreleased uh, order, order here, you see here we've got a, a works order that's not yet been released. You can go and, ha and have a look at the operations that, that are pending for that particular uh, that particular job, and they're available here. Um, you've got all the, the information you would expect and more, so you can scroll to the right, and you can see when, when the intended completion was. These are, this is quite old database, so obviously 2008, it's a vision database. You can see the components that are available here. Um, so, and you could also perform an ATP check. So going back, just show you some more of the forms that you've got. Um, so pretty much you can go anywhere. So if you want to see your purchase order or your sales order, you can simply open those forms and then start having a, a drill down into more information. Um, so the information and those responsibilities would have to be assigned to, to your user, but once that's done, then it would follow the standard roles and responsibility assignments. Let's go ahead and um, open up a sales order. You see here we've got a reserved sales order. Um, uh, I'm just going to open that up. And you see here the sales order opens up. Again, depending on whether you've got write capability would then determine whether you're able to write to these uh, forms and, up and perform updates. Uh, across here, you can see here we've got uh, 1,000 reserved, 3,240 reserved. This one is just purely demanded. So when I'm looking at the supply and demand, um, then I would expect to see a planned order. 
because I'm running, in this particular case, I'm running MRP, but you wouldn't have to be running MRP. You see here, we've got the, um, the pegging. So if, if, you, if you hover on the, on the actual field, you get to see your pegging. Uh, you see here, this has got pegging ap applied to it for the safety stock. Uh, sales order uh, is also pegged there. And then if we go to the right, we can see our exceptions. So this one is um, ordered with the compression days and it's also past due. Uh, so if you wanted to release this, you could go ahead and release with, with release planned order uh, and then that's possible. But there's further reports you can go. So for example, you wanted to do your um, pegging report. You could go ahead and run that pegging report and then you can see what's pegged to what. Uh, in terms of the supply and demand records. And here we have the pegging report. So this one says the origination, or, or origination is excess to on hand. Um, as I go to the right, I can see what the demand peg quantities are. Uh, as you would expect, I've got uh, on hand here um, and 2544. And there is nothing pegged available to that. So that would go to uh, effectively go to excess. Um, so as we go down, you can analyze all your different items in this way. I'm just going to close that form. Um, so if there were reports here that, that don't meet your eye, so let's uh, close this one and back to, back to here. Um, you've got uh, whip entities, purchase order headers, um, the pegging, as I mentioned, you're going to export your forecasts. So those of you that are populating the MRP tables, uh, you can do that in inventory or you can do it in MRP. Uh, you'd get to see your forecast over on the right hand tab here. Uh, so those are available, as you can see, uh, all the different forecast details. Now, if I'm still in the items form and if I select all of the items that, that have come back in my query, I could then go and step through the item attributes uh, by using this form. By simply going down arrow here, I get to see all the different planning information I would require. Uh, I also get to see further information about the on-hand position, reservations and so on, um, what categories have been assigned and what the unit weights and pricing are. So, so they're the, the basic um, the basic functions. Uh, there are many more, of course. So let's just go back to items. And if if we stood on this row uh, and then look at our supply and demand again, we've, uh, as mentioned before, you've got um, the ability to uh, drill down into any of these transactions, or you could go back a stage and you could look at the source uh, setup. So if I do a right click on this. Uh, main level item, I can go and have a look at the bill of materials for it. So at this point, we open uh, a bill of materials form and we use a flat style construction here, whereby we've got a row, all of the information on the single row, which you could then choose to export using a blitz report again. So in this particular case, very straightforward, we've got our, all of our bill of material quantities, we've got our bill details, if there was any details at the top, and any revision information is captured here. I'll close that form. So if I wanted to go and have a look at further information, perhaps I want to go and have a look at the on hand in more detail, and then you get the multi-org view of the on hand uh, details. So if I stretch that across to the right, um, we've got all of the on hand information here per sub inventory as well is possible. So quite a powerful feature, as you would expect uh, from the Blitz team, incorporating all these different functions um, was something that we were asked to do. Um, so if I look across uh, by, by a number of our customers, if I look across what's got a routing, this one has a routing, we can go and check to see how the routing looks. Um, so in this particular case, we've got uh, the, these different departments, we've got uh, the percentage lead time and so on. And we could open the operations from here and we could look at uh, you know, the usage rate amount for each of these operations. Uh, and that's done like that. Now, you don't need to leave the form so you could uh, to change organization. You could flip your organization 
and you could pretty much do the same thing. Uh, so for here, I could go and have a look at um, my basically my on hand of my routing, and you'll see I'm now in the M2 organization, and I haven't had to leave the form at all. So if there was a report, then you, you say, okay, mm, I'd like to to create a simple report myself. Then you'd come up into the actions, you'd start the Blitz report, uh, you're, and provided you're a IT person or a business analytical with setup, you'd have the ability to create a report. So this this then is a simple report that we're going to do uh, for item listings. And you see here, this is the start of the report. So I'm going to do select star from MT. MTL system items for type um, B and we'll give that an alias MSIB. Okay, so you can build up your, your selection here in a very simple way. Um, and we could add another table in there. So let's join it on MTL parameters because we're interested in finding out the organization code and we'll call that MP and then we'll go where one equals one and MP dot organization ID equals MSIB dot organization ID. Make sure we haven't done any typos. Um, now I'm going to have to do MSIB dot star. So if I was to do that, um, I would now, well, basically I've built a report. This does not require system administration. So you've got a very fast track way of creating reports. The main program is called Blitz Report. That then appends this and hence you don't need to, when you run it as Truth and Current Manager, it will then just process it with a report name append or at the, at the beginning so yeah, prefix you'd see simple report for item listings and then it would dash blitz report and i'll show you how that works so parameter wise so if i look at this now there are no parameters and i'm going to dump everything from the mtl system item table joined up to the mtl parameters table uh, i might want to put in another uh, another column so i'm going to do mp dot star because i'd be interested in looking at the organization code so let's go and have a look at the parameters so here we can double click we don't need to reinvent the wheel so i'm going to say organization and i'll pick up this organization code here now i'm interested in a report of changes that have been made to an item in the last x days so i'm going to pick up a, a an existing parameter I could I could easily make this myself um, but I want to see where the last update days have changed and I can see here there's a parameter here on MSIB for last update where greater than system date ie today's date minus a number of days so that 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 would work for us so I can reuse that but you could equally have just written this little piece of code here MSIB last update date greater than this date minus and you can see that there's a minus there um, and then that's going to be the parameter the number of days so if we run this now that's our report complete you see how quickly it is you get your favorite uh, technical person to drop your favorite report that he's been emailing to you <laughs> which is a common thing people write reports and then they email excel sheets well here you don't have to do it so if we run this we should get an output if there are any errors it will go uh, into the concurrent log um, and here we have our output so in this particular case, you see here, the report's called a simple listing, um, and it's looking at the organization, and, and there's lots of IDs and things on there you don't want. So you go back to the Blitz report, and then you create your template, as I showed you before. You just remove all of these columns, um, so you basically hide all, and then you start to look for the columns you're interested in as you scroll through. Well, normally you'd be interested in the item code, which is segment one. You see how it's not called segment one. I've reformatted that. I'll show you how to do that. 
Um, and I'm interested in whether the item's purchased and shippable. You can multi-select. So if you wanted to select a few more rather than having to individually select, you could go ahead and do. So you would track the, the um, areas of an item or, or the attributes of an item that you're interested in. So you can also perform a, a simple um, search here. So I want to have description, but I want description in position two. So I go ahead and put that in position two. Um, now, I'd like to have uh, here, I'm really interested in the organization code as the last uh, thing that I need. And so I'll pop that across there. And I want that in position one. So just put it in position one, tab, right. So there's our report, fully finished quite quickly. Um, it's now the item list template. I'm going to make it public so other users can use it, but they can create their own anyway. The part that they can't create is the actual report itself. So let's go back to the setup. So they wouldn't have access to creating this or this. You could assign the report to a particular user, as you would expect to do. Um, I'm going to assign this to a developer. Now the report has got a version one here. You could say uh, ready for test, ready for test. Once it's done, you've gone through your test cycles, you can then export it between unit test to integration test to user acceptance test and then to production. Or since this one's so basic, you probably just replicate it. Um, but all of those capabilities are there. As I showed you before, you can import um, any of your existing discoverer reports or your business intelligent reports and they're completely sorted out for you without having to do any additional coding so this one's there let's go ahead and run it now it's got our instead of being our all columns we're just going to have our templated columns uh, and again we'll have our beautifully formatted uh, excel but now with the columns we want to see so if we were to go back um, i'd like to see this on the concurrent queue um, i could go ahead and schedule this so Here's my report, simple report with item listing. And as I mentioned, it uh, prefixes that to Blitz report. Hasn't had to be registered in the concurrent manager, so you don't have this uh, overhead development. You can go ahead and uh, copy that request. Uh, so we we'll go ahead and copy. And once you've got that, you can go ahead and schedule it. Uh, you see here now we do the normal scheduling. Uh, so we can just say periodically on specific days. And we could increment date parameters if we were using those. Um, so that's now scheduled and you could have that running every day. Um, so back to where we were. Um, here we have our item form again. We can, uh, I said, we can uh, go for additional levels. We can apply different features here. So for example, uh, if you wanted to remove from view uh, all the buy items, you could just simply put your buy in here and then you'd reduce to just the buy items. Or you can take the filter off. The, um, as you step through, as, as you start to make inquiries, so if you're a supply planner who's always working uh, on a particular product, then you would toggle between supply and, supply and demand, details or forecast. If we come back here into, into items, um, so we go back into search. Um, the other thing it does is, as a planner, you might be doing these types of queries all the time, and you don't want to have to keep uh, putting the criteria in here. Um, you know, you didn't want to say uh, where item contains AS5, which, which is another nice feature, and then do the search. What it will do instead of that, uh, of you having to keep repeating these uh, searches, so if I click on it, uh, that will now bring in that particular product itself. Um, if we were to go back and take out these criterias, we have something called the recent search. Now the recent search is based on how, how many or how often and what were the most recent 
uh, items that you went ahead and examined within the supply and demand. So if, if you're a planner who's just working certain items uh, and these are the certain items you're working, you would then uh, ha and have evaluated their supply and demand here, they then immediately returned in the list. So I'm just going to put us back here into M1 where we've got a plan, where we've got some data um, and I'll flip across here and I, in fact I'm going to redo our our recent search here and I'll bring back our, our favorite item that we had in the beginning um, you see here now we've got the supply and demand for those again now if I go back um, and look at the item form within any form you can add blitz report so here I've got one um, I'm interested as a planner what changes have been going on with my item so you can track item changes because that will affect the behavior of your um, of your planning. So if somebody's come along and made some attribute not planned or changed the lead time and, and you wonder why things are not working as you would expect, then you could come in here um, and run your audit. In this particular case, uh, there's been no audit changes within that uh, time period. So let's just go back and do that again. Um, I'm going to run that form uh, I'm just going to take the date range out because I suspect that missed some changes okay so it wants to have a date in there so let's just pick a date I'm going to go back uh, until the 4th of June let's run that and this time we should see all the updates that have been made to the item and what columns have been changed. So let's just uh, reduce it by an organization and let's go like that. So here, what we have here is um, the product AS488, you see that there with a dot, has a new value, somebody's removed the new value um, and that was done by this particular session uh, by this particular person. Uh, and you see here, there's another one uh, the planner code has been swapped. Uh, here, the ATP flag has been swapped. Um, so we're keeping track of what is happening, which will, you know, hopefully improve your life. Uh, when you're looking at a complex problem, uh, you'll be able to go off and analyze it. Similarly, very important to planners are profiles. So if I go back to um, back to a uh, just close this form for a minute. If we open system admin, admin um, profiles really govern and very, very uh, important, especially around planning, uh, what, what the profile changes are. So here we have something called um, either a BR100 creator or a profile um, examiner. So what you can do is you can say, OK, what's my profile? What level? Uh, am I interested in and when was it last changed here? So you can really start to investigate what happened to the different users uh, or, or different profiles that might affect uh, the different users of the planning. And then here we've got uh, our all of the profiles and you can say, well, I'm interested in uh, planning profiles. So you can just deselect those and then you can put in the profiles you're interested in. These are just change pro profiles. So see here, I've got a couple of planning profiles, um, MSC, MSD and MSO. And these are the profiles that have been changed. And who, who updated them? So immediately you can say, OK, my plan's no, not, not behaving uh, past you uh, in the same way. And you can see here, well, somebody, somebody has changed that. Um, flexibility on scheduling somebody has changed that um, so different behavior of your plan now would be in place as a result of these profiles and it's similar story on any object in fact so those of you who are using order management perhaps um, I'll just show you what we can do from here so if we go across to order management um, we have this uh, toolkit concept so if things are changing in order management or if you want to document them and a famous one to document would be the um, order type uh, transactions. 
uh, because it's quite a big uh, big object so you can just simply run it out into your BR100 and what this will do is it will document all of your uh, order types together your line types together with the workflows that are, that are assigned uh, and that will then put the report with the transaction type from left to right you can filter those obviously um, you can look for mixed or, or just straight order perhaps you're interested in uh, perhaps you're looking in for the line type and then you can build up your report like that so across here then obviously you've got uh, what the cost of goods sold was, what the receivable transaction setup's like. So you can go, go off and investigate why certain orders are not behaving in the same way as you would expect. From a similar viewpoint, um, I showed you one report from the supply chain hub, uh, which was the order, uh, basically the order book. So if you're in order organizer, age old problem, uh, a lot of volume in here, same as the planner's workbench in advanced planning, similarly. Um, if you were to use the hourglass here, you know, depending on how much volume of data, you could end up waiting 10 minutes and then your session would be locked by the hourglass. Well, we show you a better way. Um, we've got this um, export function. Uh, and here, these are the same parameter variables as your, as basically as you searched on on the actual order or organizer form. But if I go ahead and run this, we go straight through the concurrent manager, produce you a, an immediate um, Excel report. Uh, and here we've got customers, uh, the order type that was played, um, what date it was raised. And then right across, we get the line type, we get the extended value, we've got the shipped quantity and so on. So simple to do. And then you can email these or you can schedule them as being emailed uh, with, with your users. Uh, just to go back one, you can then build uh, the DIFOP, which is a common metric you'd want uh, in supply chain, whereby you're measuring the, distant, the difference between uh, what was actually shipped and de delivered on full um, and whether it was late fulfilled. And this particular report, what it does is it compares the um, the actual ship date versus the uh, the promised ship date, and then it will do a comparison versus the quantity that was shipped uh, versus what was requested. Um, so we 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 can format those columns. You see here we turn this one red because it's late, and then you can filter on all those orders that are running late uh, here by the red column. And then over here, shipped when full, when zero. Uh, you can see here we've got a number of orders that were not shipped uh, on full. Uh, and then you can start to build your metric here. So quite straightforward to do. That was just adapting one of our standard CEDA reports um, by adding a couple of extra columns. Now, if I go across um, into advanced planning, I say we've been in the hub, but um, I'm now going to go across change responsibility to advanced planning. And then you get to see... Uh, some additional reports. So within the planner workbench itself, um, and, and this is one of the things we, we want to build or extend the hub to include, because at the moment it's only including uh, MRP, um, but we're in the, the process of uh, design modeling this to work with the, MS, M, the ASCP or the advanced supply planning. So if I pick my organization I'm interested in, you've got the query capability here, um, on the plan uh, which is mm, okay semi-usable but uh, it's still quite painful to create these reports far better if you have a, a blitz report and i'll just show you how we do that so let's just go ahead and um, go back to the plan i'm going to select a plan here and go to supply and demand And now we have our planner reports. So I can go ahead and uh, run any of the planning reports. Uh, for example, pegging. It's an age-old problem where your pegging's down here when really you want it on your row of the record. So I would go ahead, pick the ATP plan, pick the planner. Uh, I could pick, pick the organization as well if I needed to. And then this would give you a proper 
pegging report. So here we have ATP, planner, planning exception, and then here the pegged quantity versus demand quantity. And what's it pegged to? Sales order, sales order here, safety stock. You see here we've got some excess. And again, these reports are already in our library. So if you go to, a, to the Engenetics uh, library, I'll just show you where they are. Um, let's just start a, a session on here. So if we went to Engenetics homepage, you can see we've got the uh, available library functions. So th these libraries uh, are free to share. So we've put all our our toolkit functions out there, our operational reports. Um, so if you wanted to come in here, you can you can start uh, having a look at the the library. So here that that one I mentioned uh, was an ASCP one, and you see here we've got the reports available for you to have a look at. Plus the uh, the extract. You can also run our demo login. You can go in and and have a look for yourself. Um, you know. The Blitz uh, software is available free to try anyway for your first 30 reports. So, um, you know, there's no cost for you. The installation process takes about 30 minutes um, and we will do it with you. Uh, the training, as you can see, it, it's it's more or less, uh, well, same as EBS anyway. Um, so the training requirements are fairly, fairly light, uh, typically one to two hours and you're up and running. Uh, as you would expect, because you're, you're using all the same commands. Um, if I go ahead and close this, I'll, I'll just show you one more, one more report, um, the ASCP exceptions report, uh, which is, is basically going to replace uh, that, that nasty query function within the uh, planner supply bench. Uh, and that's possible here, I'll show you. Um, and here we've got... Um, our exceptions here. So for this particular order, uh, value of 809, there's late late replenishment for it, um, and the, it's late by uh, 98 days arrival, and the demand will be satisfied on the 4th of June. This plan's obviously slightly out of date. Um, okay, that's that one. Now, back to where we were. I'll close that. I'll just go back to the supply chain hub and we'll just have a final just, just a discussion about the last features available here. By all means, uh, get in touch with me if I've missed something. Um, the, typically, the type of usage um, here, as I mentioned, people in order management, customer services would probably use this form to look at supply and demand. Uh, buyers would probably look at this, this form uh, and, of course, planners. The, this form in itself is a Blitz report, so you can configure this reform, this form yourself. So um, let's just have a look at what it looks like. Uh, this is called a search form. If we go to the setup, uh, and this is really functional, the parameters, all of these parameters you see are here. So item, description, long description, language. You see, they're, they're all there. So if you don't want all of those search criteria, or you maybe want to force somebody to put in a value, then you can just simply do this, and that's uh, job done. So now excluded item type will be mandatory. So that's the extent of your development. If I now close this form, reload it, you see this is now mandatory so very easy to configure the, the report tool itself is the fastest tool to x to, to excel you won't find a faster tool um, it covers all the core processes i've only showed you the supply chain today if we were to look at the other toolkit options so if i click in uh, in the setup button i'll show you the available categories so we've got things for dbas We've got the applied patches. We've got all of the AWR work, but done in a proper way, something that can be read. If you look at one of these reports as a DBA, you'll find it totally readable. It will give you the package name. It will give you a line of code that's wrong. You don't have to work through some complicated HTML. Straightforward to use. If we now look at some of the other uh, library kits, so as I mentioned, there are many. 
um, we've got uh, four operations. This is where we've got reports around the process. So P2P, um, record to report, we've got GL, we've got inventory, we've got uh, a lot of item work. And then on top of that, there's a whole suite of cost accounting reports. Now, cost accounting is a, a quite a complicated area. So the cost accounting uh, reports that are available have been prepared by um, one of the masters in this area, Doug Volts. So if you search on Doug Volts, these are his reports, which he's also made available uh, to the EBS community. And these are fantastic. I mean, they go right the way from purchasing through inventory, uh, subledger, and you can get a real reconciliation going on. Let's just close those out. So on the categorization uh, for setup and support, this is where we do a lot of BR100 work. Uh, we can look at concurrent managers, what's holding up you know, certain queues. Uh, we've got all of the different programs and executables we list, um, what's in each value set, what, what are the profiles, and so on. So there's, there's a whole raft of utilities there for checking interfaces, for making sure there's no, no uh, stuck workflows or trip stops of not failing or the receiving interface is uh, not jammed and so on. This particular one is trip stops. Um, so we put the Blitz form into most forms where, where it becomes useful. Uh, you can do that yourself. You, you choose how you want to do it. Now, if we go across uh, into uh, system administration, I'll just show you one last thing. Uh, from the concurrent request viewpoint, uh, this is, again, difficult to analyze. We've got all of these reports here. Well, why not run a proper uh, analysis of your concurrent requests? Now you can see what's been started within the last seven days, how long it was running for, uh, was it waiting? Um, you know, and as a support consultant, you could be alerted. And we've got this incremental basis whereby if you run this every two hours looking for bottlenecks or slow running processes, you could then only get the delta of those if you wanted to. So let's run that. And then here, we've got, uh, from left to right, we've got the ability to see all of the reports um, we've just run, the ones we were running, uh, what the parameters were. Uh, you see here, the parameters are here. Um, we enhance those so that they can become readable. Uh, so uh, in some cases, you don't understand what the values are. Here's, here's a classic. Um, you get a, an ID. 11637. Here we actually say, okay, that means uh, MTL parameter, for example. Um, and, and as you go down, you know, we translate all of those difficult to understand uh, programs. So I'll just put a filter on here. I'll show, I'll show you some good ones that uh, are, are difficult to find often. And we do it with profiles as well because, you, you know, sometimes the values and what are ones and noughts and, and nobody understands what, what the ones and noughts are. Um, so far better if we, uh, you know, explain them. Here we've got uh, 111. <laughs> and as a consultant, you'd say, well, what's that? Well, at least now you can uh, see what's going on. We've translated all of those into something meaningful. Okay, so in summary, back into manufacturing. Supply chain help. You see that is now still mandatory. I shall have to remember to uh, go ahead and remove that. Um, let's just put a value in that I know is good. Um, and now let's search. And here we have all our finished goods. So remember, we've got right click to go anywhere in the items form. We can look at cost, cost roll up, material transactions. We can run blitz reports from within. So here we've got items, material transactions, on-hand quantities. 
exceptions, pegging orders, lines, and works orders. On the right hand side, we've got our supply and demand. And this one's not got much supply and demand, but if I find one that does, so let's just put in our favorite it criteria. Item contains S5. I'm not sure it's a finished good. That's the only problem. In fact, I'll just go back and modify that report because that will save us doing it in a minute. Uh, take that mandatory parameter away. Because we don't want to do that. And now we reload. Not the MRP workbench. It's like clicking. We should now be back to how we were. So item contains we used as five quite use that quite useful feature um, supply and demand as you would expect your supply and demand quantity is is running down here as a count so you know, minus one minus one plus one your planned order comes in here to try and resolve the situation you can release it from here with the right click um, again reports more reports here don't forget you can change your organization. You can limit the number of sub inventories you want to see, um, the details, you can step through the item. And if you're using forecast, you can put the forecast in here. So that was it. Um, all of this information is on our YouTube channel, the Enginetics YouTube channel. Our library is free to use. The Blitz software is free to use. and for your first 30 reports, of course. Our hope is that obviously you'd use more than 30 reports, but then it reverts to a very simple, low structured license fee. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm Glenn Whelan at uh, Engilatics uh, and obviously look forward to your questions.